Welcome back to JB Reviews. I'm in the process of building a cabin chassis truck and there's a lot of people out there who are telling me not to go with the Max Tro truck, okay? Now, I wanna answer the question, should you go Max Tow with your cabin chassis truck or even with your regular pickup truck? In this video, we're gonna discuss some of the pros and cons I have this truck over here. This is the one we're gonna be building with a hot shot bed. This is a max tow truck. On this side, this truck does not have max tow. So we're gonna go through some of the benefits and drawbacks to obviously both. But yeah, if you haven't done so yet, be sure to reach out to Ken here at Larry H. Miller Super Ford. These trucks are available. We are putting a hot shot bed on this one but there's a lot more trucks available that you might be interested in. These are Lariat trim packages. In the next video that I do, I'm gonna be driving these trucks. So I'm gonna show you guys MPG, RPMs, all that stuff, just to see if it makes sense to go with the Max Tow package. Let's get started. Now, I'm not sure if you guys can tell on the camera, I do have these trucks high idling for the next video, so I'm gonna have them run for another five minutes, so I apologize in advance if it's kinda of loud. It's definitely loud around here right now. But let's go ahead and check out the window sticker so you guys can check out the difference in the price point. So this truck does not have the Max Tow package. So you save that money up front on the window sticker. Now, unfortunately, this is not apples to apples for the pricing because this truck does not have the dual tank. So it only has the rear one. So this is 40 gallons. And so you lose that tank here. I think it's like 26 and a half gallons of fuel that you lose. But the 410 comes standard. I'm assuming it says regular axles. So it's probably just a open diff, more or less, right? And here's just the pricing really quickly. This one is the carbonized gray color. 84 inch cab to axle. Now the truck on this side, this is the Max Tow truck. Let's go ahead and hop inside because it's kind of loud. Now on this truck, you guys will see that when you get the max trailering package, it upgrades your axle ratio out back, so it goes to a 430, so a little bit lower gearing, and it has a limited slip rear axle as well. Now this is $395, but when you get this lower gearing, you also get the high capacity trailer tow package. Now that's $580 right there, okay? This truck does have the Payload Plus package too, so it does upgrade that as well, so $11.55. So those three things come together on this package. So it's not cheap, don't get me wrong. And this one has that dual fuel tank as well, so $625. So this truck is $86,460. Now, let's go ahead and discuss some things that I left out just now. When you don't get the max trailering package, you do lose out on some of your payload capacity. So you guys see right here, this truck has an 18,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. 18,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. This truck over here, it has a 19,500 pound gross vehicle weight rating, but that's not it. That's not it guys. You ready for this? Also, your rear gross axle weight rating is 14,706 pounds. On the non-max tow truck, they reduced this rear gross axle weight rating to 13,660 pounds. So not only do you lose the gross fuel weight rating, which is 1,500 pounds, which equates to more payload on the max tow truck, you also have a lower axle rating out back. So when you think about towing, obviously I do know in some cases these axles are both overbuilt, right? And in some cases it's probably rare that people get to max axle rating on these trucks. But that's not always true. Some guys do tow quite a bit with these trucks. So when people tell you not to get the max tow package because you're gonna, you know, obviously lose more fuel economy, that is kind of true, but it's not true either. We're gonna go over that in the next video, so you wanna to subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna break that apart when we drive these trucks, okay? 
Let's talk about your tires and suspension for a second. Now these trucks both have the same cab to axle rating, okay? As far as the tires go, here are the capacities. These are both gonna be 225, 70, 19 and a They're literally the identical tires. They're a load range G, 3,970 pounds for single, 3,750 pounds for dual, 110 PSI, same tire size, right? And then here is the capacities. It's kind of hard to see it on this side. It's upside down, but the tire capacity is the exact same on both sides. No change there. Now, when you count the Leafs in the main pack, it's the exact same. They both have one overload leaf spring. And as I said, it's the exact same. So there's two things that pop out to me though on the suspension that are different. Number one, take a look at the bump stop right here. The bump stops on the max trailering truck are a lot shorter, okay? When you look at them on this one, you see how much longer it is compared? So that's why when people say online there's no difference between max toe and non, that's not true. Also, check this out. Even the hangers on the Leafs have a different design compared to the non-max towing truck. I'm willing to bet you the spring rate is different. Even though you have the same amount of Leafs in the setup, I'm willing to bet you the spring rate is slightly different. So you're paying more money, not because Ford wants you to, but because they are making a difference on the suspension of the truck. It gets worse, it gets worse. So you guys see right here, this is your drive shaft, right? You see this? PC 34 4K 145. Here's the max tow truck, PC 34 4K 145. So it looks like the drive shafts are the exact same until you look at the actual serial number. So if you look at the serial number, oh, let me go on the side. You guys see right here, the serial number is UV23348. This is for the max tow truck. The one on the non max tow truck is UV24019. I don't care what anyone says. You can do what you want, but the parts are different. They look exactly the same. Even when you look at the axle, right? This axle is different from the one on the max tow truck. Now when you look at them, let's see. I don't really see a big difference on the axle looking at them. They probably look exactly the same. Let's see. I don't wanna make any assumptions. I mean, this one looks a little bit more weathered, but they look exactly the same. But you see right here, D086. This one says D083. So obviously those stickers are different, which means these axles are different. So if you're gonna tow 30,000 plus pounds, that is probably the biggest issue that you're gonna have between these two trucks. Let's go online, let's see what the towing capacity is for both, and we'll jump back into the video. This is the towing guide for the cabin chassis pickup. So looking at conventional towing first, there is no difference between the 410 and the 430 for towing capacity. So obviously if you're only gonna be towing conventionally, it makes no sense to get the lower gearing. However, when you consider your gooseneck towing, now this is just 200 pounds more than fifth wheel, so just keep that in mind. When you go with the max tow, you guys see what your gross combined weight rating becomes. So you have to have the trailer tow package and the payload plus package. Now, as far as the towing capacities go for the gooseneck, it's 24,900 compared to 33,300 pounds. So it's a difference of 8,400 pounds. When we lived full time in our RV and we were traveling cross country, I talked to so many hotshot guys at RV dealers, at truck stops, and they all pretty much had the same theory. You can never have too much truck, right? Most guys who are planning on towing a gooseneck trailer are probably 100% gonna go with the max trailering package, and here's why. In some cases, you're probably gonna be towing over the 33,000 pound capacity of this truck. 
you might be towing 40,000 pounds. Would you really want to be towing that much weight with this truck after seeing what you just saw out back? You can clearly tell that there's a difference between a non-max trailering package and a max trailering package. Now obviously some guys will tell you you don't need the lower gearing. But here's what I'll tell you. I just did a video driving one of these trucks for the first time. I was unloaded. All it had was a hauler bed that was aluminum. So it's a lot lighter than a steel one. The truck felt very sluggish, and that truck had a 430. If you're towing 30,000 pounds plus, would you really want to be doing that with a truck that is not set up to tow heavy? That's just my opinion. I think that if it were me, I would do the right thing and go with the max tow package. It makes perfect sense. It's only about $1,700, $1,800 in that ballpark of a cost, and you can clearly see your suspension is a little bit different. Your axle's a little bit different, your drive shaft's a little bit different. These are all components that are going to be worked hard when you're towing 30,000 pounds plus. And as you guys saw, this truck is only capable of towing about 25,000 pounds compared to this one over here. It's almost a 10,000 pound swing in towing capacity, right? So if you're going to be towing above the towing capacity of that truck, I'd rather have the overbuilt components. They don't look different, but they have different serial numbers. So they have to be different. You know, I haven't even looked at the framing of these trucks. The framing could even be a little bit different, although I don't think they are. But I'm serious when I say this. If it were me, I would 100% go with the max trailing package if you know you're going to need to tow at max or even higher. Now, obviously, most guys are not going to be towing with these trucks, right? Some guys might be using this as a welder truck, right? And so you're not really needing to have a 30,000 pound tow pig. In those cases, this truck right here is perfectly fine. And if you're looking to do like RV hauling for like the manufacturers, you don't need 30,000 pounds of towing capacity because most of those trailers are gonna be unloaded. And in some cases, the dry weights are just at 20,000 pounds for some of the heavier toy haulers. So this is a perfectly fine truck. And the RPM is gonna run a little bit lower, which means you could potentially have better fill economy. So this would be the better way to go, 100%. But in the next video, as I said earlier, we're gonna be driving these trucks. I'm gonna show you guys the RPMs. And now I'm gonna be doing my MPG runs a little bit differently. I'm gonna get on the highway, I'm gonna run at 65 miles an hour, and I'm gonna see the difference, okay? So you don't wanna miss the video. I'm still gonna do my zero to 60 run too, just to see the difference in that as well. So you don't wanna miss the video. They're gonna be pretty cool. See you guys soon.